Welcome to this video on diarrheal di diseases. In this video, I'd like to explain the differences between dysentery, which is bloody diarrhea, and watery diarrhea, as far as a um, couple of the bacteria that can cause these sort of diseases and also the pathophysiology of what happens. So dysentery is bloody diarrhea, usually that presents with a fever, and watery diarrhea it typically doesn't have as much of a fever, if at all, and um, no blood involved. So we'll ex explain both of those. Okay, so what we have at the top of this picture here is um, the simple columnar epithelial cells of the mucosa in the intestine. So let's write that out. So the kind of cells that line your intestine are tall columnar epithelial cells and this part of the intestinal wall is called the mucosa and this is your barrier to the world you want this to be strong and healthy and happy and have lots of good bacteria here we're just going to be focusing on when the bad bacteria get out of control Okay, so the first thing I want to um, explain is that a lot of times with bacterial infections, it's actually the toxin that causes the big problem. So let's imagine that this is um, Shigella bacteria, it's a gram negative, or E. coli. And a specific kind of E. coli that can cause bacterial infection is known as um, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. So for example, then we could say Shigella, we'll focus on these two, or um, we could sometimes call it E-H-E-C for um, entero, meaning intestine, H for hemorrhagic E. coli. So if we're going to end up with bloody diarrhea with dysentery, we need to figure out what is it that these bacteria are doing that eventually cause that diarrhea, that bloody diarrhea. So uh, why don't you use a green pen to show that these bacteria are producing toxins and they're always called an enterotoxin if they are um, affecting the intestinal cells. And so this is a type of exotoxin that is specifically called an enterotoxin. Enterotoxin. And what it can do is it binds to receptors. So we'll just put the word binds because I ran out of room there. Then use a blue highlighter to color in, um, for example, some receptors on these intestinal cells. Now these receptors are normally meant to be able to take in a particular kind of nutrient, but the bacteria toxin um, in this case is able to bind, and by binding, it's able to enter the cell. So then the toxin is able to get inside of the intestinal cells, and at this point, it may be able to um, uh, kill the cell. So I'm going to use a purple pen right here to describe this. So a very famous kind of toxin that's made by Shigella as well as some kinds of E. coli is called Shiga toxin. And what this toxin does, so we'll maybe to remind ourselves, let's put it in green. I'm using green for any toxin on this page, but right now I'm talking about Shiga toxin. So it inhibits protein synthesis. So that means that the cell can't do what it needs to do. So by inhibiting protein synthesis, which may kill the cell. So that is the first way that some bacterial um, infections are able to cause damage. So, um, this specifically I'm talking about um, the exotoxin Shiga toxin. Okay, so then the next thing I'd like to talk about is what happens if this toxin gets into the bloodstream. So let's, um, let's see, we'll make an arrow. Imagine then that this toxin is able to get into the bloodstream. So the capillaries that are in the submucosa, maybe we should put that here. Let's put submucosal capillary. And let's go ahead and line the, um, let's see, I'm going to use yellow, I think here, 
Uh, these are endothelial cells, and these are simple squamous epithelial cells that line all of your capillaries and actually all of your blood vessels. And they uh, maintain the integrity of the wall and they have, are able to release hormones and they respond to inflammation and a whole bunch of important jobs. But if this Shiga toxin gets into the bloodstream, it may damage these endothelial cells and cause the capillary to rip open as these cells are damaged and then red blood cells can get out. So let's go ahead and label this endothelial. So this would be a cell that lines your blood vessels. And if the toxin is able to damage these endothelial cells and they start to break, then red blood cells can get out. And that is how certain kinds of GI bacteria can cause bloody diarrhea. So these represent the red blood cells that are able to get out. So the capillaries are in the submucosa, they're underneath the mucosa. But notice that if the intestinal cells are being damaged by the Shiga toxin, now the red blood cells can get all the way out into this area here that we call the lumen. And this is where the food is passing through. And so whatever can, keeps going here will end up in the diarrhea. And then on this side of things is where the um, blood is and then the inside of your body. So you could sort of think of this as the, the open part in your intestines and that this is behind the wall. So that second step, let's put again in purple and say that the toxin may damage the endothelial cells. Let's see if we can fit this um, right here. Oops, I don't like writing it at an angle like this, sorry. May damage the endothelial cells and lead to hemorrhaging. Hemorrhage is a weird word, isn't it? Spelling that word. Hemo means blood. Um, so hemorrhaging, and then that, of course, is what causes the bloody diarrhea. So when we talk about cholera that just causes watery diarrhea, you'll notice that it's not causing this breakdown of the blood vessels with its toxin. Okay, so we're not quite done with what this toxin can do, though. With some of these enterotoxins, if they are able to then continue in the bloodstream, so here we have another capillary. If this toxin is able to continue in the bloodstream and get to the kidneys, it can actually cause damage in the kidneys. So the toxin may cause what's called hemolytic uremic syndrome. So if it reaches the kidneys, cause hemolytic, so hemo means blood breaking, so the red blood cells start to break down, the person's going to become really anemic, and uremic, because this is uh, damaging the kidneys then, um, as the red blood cells that have been damaged are um, clogging up in the kidney, and sometimes this problem is called HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is kind of famous for certain um, types of E. coli, like E. coli 0157. Okay, so look at what this toxin can do, if we back up a bit. The toxin can inhibit protein synthesis and directly kill intestinal cells. Boom, right there, you're gonna have a problem because now this wonderful barrier that protects you and helps you and aids you in digestion has been damaged. And so now bad stuff can get in and good stuff like blood can go out and we have a problem, right? Okay, the second thing that we talked about that this different kinds of enterotoxins can do, uh, especially focusing on Shiga toxin, uh, they are able to damage the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and then the red blood cells are able to escape out of capillaries, go through that damaged intestinal wall, 
and lead to bloody diarrhea. And then the third um, thing we're talking about here with this toxin is that the toxin, if it reaches the kidneys, can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, which means that the kidneys are kind of getting clogged up with broken red blood cells and uh, kidney failure can occur. So I want to use an orange pen to talk about an important treatment concept here. This important treatment concept is that antibiotic therapy should be used with caution. Uh, for example, if someone has an E. coli infection, let's write this here. So for this reason, and we'll use ABX for antibiotic therapy, move this over just a little bit, should be used with caution. or not at all. Sometimes the decision is best to just offer supportive therapy like IV therapy. And the reasons are because number one, the antibiotic may increase exposure to endotoxin. So you will remember that gram-negative bacteria like Shigella and like E. coli have lipopolysaccharide in their cell wall. And when they start to die, then uh, that endotoxin is released. So if you have um, bacteria in the bloodstream, which we haven't talked about bacteria yet, but if that, then and you start killing off the bacteria and there's damage to the intestinal layer, then the endotoxin could actually become rampant in the blood and worsen the situation. And what that can do then is remember that um, this, um, will increase the risk of a cytokine storm. So it's like this massive systemic inflammation.